Coming up, sniffing out clues to track BC grizzlies. Predicting epileptic seizures and helping to prevent them. And a dog's life in the theater. Welcome to the heart of Canada's bear country. Get the bear. Get him. Lucy and bear biologist Wayne McCrory are on a fact-finding mission. Get the bear over there. Get him. Get him. Bear. When I go on long hikes in my bear work with Lucy, she works ahead of me through the real dense bear habitat or on the trail. She'll go around bends and make sure there's no grizzly bears. So she's like my early warning system for my work, which can be quite dangerous. Lucy, a Newfoundland lab border collie cross, is helping Wayne determine if this hiking trail is popular with bears. If it is, Wayne will recommend it be moved to limit the risk of bear encounters. So these detectives are looking for signs and clues of bear activity. Trampled vegetation is their first clue. The kind of work that I do with Lucy is called a bear hazard assessment. And if you have a trailer campground that's in a big grizzly bear restaurant, that's often where you get maulings or bear attacks and stuff. So we map all of that and we say, well, this trail shouldn't be here, you should move it there. And that campsite, you know, should be moved over there and that kind of thing. And, and so that, by doing that, we sort of separate bears and people more and make parks safer for people and better for bears. Another clue along the trail, a bear scratching post. Because often we have to go into berry patches and stuff and she gets right in there and lets me know if there's a bear around and makes it a lot, lot easier and safer to do my work. Good dog, what a beautiful treat. Not only does Lucy keep Wayne safe from bears, she's an ace at sniffing out signs of them. I wouldn't trade her nose for any computer, or any uh, smell synthesizer in the world. Oh, you found some grizzly hair on the rubbing tree. What a good dog. Good girl. More evidence. Good girl. Good dog. When I'm hiking through the dense undergrowth, I don't have to myself always be looking for bears. I can be recording all the plants and the bear sign, and I just watch Lucy, and she watches me. It's like a really almost telepathic way of working together. The evidence is mounting. It's a fresh bear track. The kind of control that I have with Lucy is um, doesn't require a leash. I have what I call a verbal leash with Lucy. One of the more powerful commands that Lucy is trained to respond to that just totally activates her is, go get the bear. And she instantly re reacts to that and starts looking around and that's like, like, like pushing all of her buttons all at once and it, it's pretty amazing. Um, that along with, if she does go chase a bear at that command is, uh, you know, the whistle that brings her back is like an obedience command, which brings her back again, so she knows that, you know. It, it's pretty amazing how the uh, animals like dogs understand and respond and, you know, are responsible for communicating. Right, Lucy? The relationship you can have with a, a working dog is really quite incredible and I, I think for the kind of work we do, I have a very strong bond with Lucy and she has a strong bond with me. It's kind of a, I think a very beautiful thing that humans have with animals and animals have with humans. It works both ways. Come on, Luce. Nothing around here in the way of bear use, so I think we'll be okay to spend the night here. Gonna pitch our tent and get a little fire going and 
have something to eat. Okay, we better get this tent up before it gets too dark. In remote areas, Lucy and Wayne go out for a week at a time and camp. I sleep very well at night because when Lucy comes in the tent with me, she's monitoring. When a bear does come by, which has happened, you know, she will wake me up by barking and stuff. If Lucy and Wayne find enough hard evidence that bears are using this hiking trail as their own trail, he'll recommend that the human trail be rerouted out Good of bear dog, territory. Lucy. Good dog. Careful. Careful, Lucy. Good dog. Wayne collects more evidence with high-tech gadgets like GPS and an infrared camera which is triggered when a bear crosses in front of its beam. Lucy and Wayne have finished their investigation. It's time to head back home. Great oh, on, Lucy. look at Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, sweetie. Did Get you have a... She is. Look at her. Did you have a good trip? Did you see some bears? I'm very proud of the work that Wayne and Lucy do, and, and that's part of the reason why I married Wayne, is I'm so proud of the work that he does to save habitat for bears and for all the other creatures that live in the forest and in these beautiful places. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. The pair's findings indicate that to make the park safer for people and better for bears, the trail should be moved. Set a remote camera. Bye, yeah. Doing a good job. It's pretty nice. Lucy and Wayne's work has helped keep people and bears safe by rerouting trails in over 15 parks. Having traveled in places in the United States where the grizzlies are extinct, you have the mountains, you have the wilderness, but you have the spirit gone from the wilderness. And it just, I mean, they have a right to exist too. And I really feel like um, part of my life is dedicated to setting aside large uh, sanctuary areas for bears. In fact, half a million acres of British Columbia rainforest have recently been set aside as a bear sanctuary, free from logging companies and people, thanks in part to the efforts of Lucy and Wayne. Harvey, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier cross, spends every second of every day with his owner, Gillian McCluskey. Gillian suffers from lupus and severe uncontrolled epilepsy. She needed to try something different because medication hadn't helped. He's a good lad. Gillian qualified for a seizure alert assistance dog from Support Dogs UK run by Val Strong. They train together for eight months. Harvey walks at exactly Gillian's pace and looks up at her constantly. When we're training a seizure alert dog, it's very important that we teach them to be constantly uh, focused on their owner. We're constantly teaching the dog to keep checking and looking um, because it is a minute behavioural cue, be it uh, a slight f change in facial tone or dilation of pupil that uh, may precede the seizure. Uh, and the dog has to be able to, to check on that and know when that's going to happen. 
Harvey can detect a seizure 15 minutes prior to its onset. Um, what he's trained to do is detect minute behavioural cues that precede a seizure, which is why he's been taught to focus on Gillian, to constantly keep checking her. What he does is he superimposes the picture he's seeing now on a picture that's in his memory bank that, he, as far as he's concerned, is the norm. As soon as the picture he sees now is different from that uh, normal memory, then what happens is, is that's his beginning of his alert. I don't get any auras at all. I can be feeling fine, but because Harvey's personality starts to change, then I know that something's going to happen. And then five minutes before the attack, he will suddenly go into a terrible tremor, whimper, and his eyes will focus on me and not move off me. And that's him starting to tell me that the attack is going to be five minutes time and you must get yourself into a safe position. Val demonstrates how she trained Harvey to react when Jillian has a seizure. He's standing on my chest trying to stop me from getting up um, because I'm not well enough to get up and I haven't given him the right signal to say that I'm well. Uh, and this is very, very, very important. When he's permanently trying to bring me around, standing on my chest, making sure uh, that he tries to keep me in a position so that I don't get up before I need to and before I'm well enough to. Only when I can say his name, then he knows that I'm going to be OK and all I see is this big black wagging tail and he's happy that I'm OK and he's done his job. Harvey's reward is food. It keeps him relaxed about Jillian's seizures. The difference Harvey has made is astonishing. I was having about five to ten seizures in a week, and they would come in uh, a lot of clumps. And then they've come down to one seizure in the last five weeks. For epileptics, stress can bring on a seizure. Thanks to Harvey, Jillian feels secure and less stressed. We like that, don't we? Yes, we do. One of the fantastic things is the dramatic reduction in seizure frequency once somebody has a seizure alert dog. Um, so they're not only helping with people's epilepsy, they're actually treating it. It's something that a drug can't do. Um, a drug cannot have uh, that companionship and that loyalty. During her visit, Val microchips Harvey so that if he gets lost, he'll be found as soon as possible. Okay. All done now. You're a microchipped boy. She also teaches Harvey some new skills. Gillian has arthritis, and Harvey is learning to take things up and down the stairs. Send him down with something to me. Okay, take this to Val. Good boy! Oh, what a good boy! Jillian has had Harvey for 15 months. Val visits every four months to see how things are going and to check that the standards of training are being maintained. There's my boy. That's it. We have to ensure that should Jillian drop the lead, that Harvey would be very happy to return to Jillian um, and also help her collect the lead together. Lead tension and curb approach is extraordinarily important with a seizure alert dog because obviously if you are likely to be going into a seizure, even if your dog's warned you, your dog should not drag you anywhere that's not appropriate. It's very, very important that the dog can remain calmly at the owner's side. Hey, Harvey. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. The assessment continues in the busy streets of Dorking to make sure Harvey isn't distracted by people, noise, or other dogs. The uncertainty in people's lives when they have uncontrolled epilepsy um, is a lack of control, never knowing when uh, a seizure is going to take place, perhaps having a seizure in the middle of the road, in a shopping centre, the indignity of that. Um, a seizure alert dog puts the person good back dad. in control. You are. You're a good boy. There was a time when Harvey's future as a seizure alert dog was in doubt. When he was in the kennels waiting for a new home, he was badly bitten by another dog. Luckily, he recovered. 
After Harvey's uh, experience in the kennels where he was attacked by the German Shepherd, we have to ensure that um, he was relaxed around other dogs and could be sociable around other dogs. And we have to maintain that uh, standard of sociability. So Harvey has to be checked on a regular basis that um, he's happy and relaxed to play and uh, interact with other dogs appropriately. Bye, Matt. Harvey's been trained not to be distracted by food at home or in restaurants. Jillian's father's birthday is a good test. Harvey down, Harvey settle. He can settle. be in a room with lots of people and people eating and everybody around him doesn't bother him at all. He just takes it in his stride and all he will do is he'll be with me and watching out for me. Val is finished Harvey's assessment. Harvey seems to be doing very well. In all the seizure alert dogs that we've trained, Harvey is one of the best, I have to say. Um, he's got a wonderful character. He's a little cheeky chap, I have to say, but his ability is outstanding. Harvey's abilities were recognized recently when he won a national award. This is Harvey's. Um, trophy for being one of the finalists in Golden Bonio's Dog of the Year. And Harvey came a super second. And he, that is why he is the best dog there is around. He is number one dog. I don't worry about not coming first, but second is good enough for me out of the 2,000 entrants. Jillian's mother is thankful Harvey came into their lives. The difference in Jillian since she got Harvey has been remarkable. Uh, she smiles a lot. She goes for walks on her own and she has such confidence. She talks to people all over the place. Because of having Harvey, um, he's there. He watches out for her. I think he gives her unconditional love. And she certainly gives that back to him. And, uh, no, it's, it's just wonderful. Training a seizure alert dog is very rewarding. Um, to see the change in somebody is absolutely brilliant. And in particular, Gillian. Um, she had low self-esteem. Um, she needed independence. She needed that security. She was desperate to be Gillian. Um, Harvey has provided her the, the opportunity to live a very positive and active life. There's no words for Harvey because he's changed my life completely. I couldn't do without him now and I would need, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine anything happening to him now because he's worth my whole future, my whole life and feeling that freedom which I lost so much through the last 30 years. It's, it's just wonderful. He's so great. Aren't you? Yes, I love you too. Yes. Canada's Stratford, Ontario is famous for its world-renowned theatre festival and its charm. At the Avon, one of the theaters in town, Chekhov's The Seagull is playing. Every actor has a different way of preparing for a performance. One actor in this play likes to get some exercise and fresh air early in the day with a walk in the woods. Chokidar, a brown Labrador, is the most famous theater dog in the country. She and her owner Rod Beatty are both appearing in The Seagull. Chokidar's nine years old now, nine and a half years old. And like, uh, like many older dogs, she's slowing down. She has some arthritic problems. Um, it helps her to warm up before she, she goes to work. We have to make sure she's as supple as she can be. Chokidar's been in theaters all her life. And I suppose what it is, is that she can smell when she's in a theater. She feels like it's a second home. Rod keeps clippings of Chokidar's stage appearances. 
She's been in Arthur Miller's The Crucible and Shakespeare's Macbeth. Chokidar is Rod's traveling companion when he takes a show on the road, like his famous Wingfield plays. Whether at home or on the road, Chokidar always sleeps in her traveling crate, so she has the same familiar environment. The secret to keeping a performance fresh in the theater for any actor, canine or otherwise, is to, is to go in with the right attitude. She goes in with unbounded joy each time, and, and her attitude is infectious so that it, it actually helps the rest of the company. I think the phrase, go to work, to her, means unbounded joy and attention and rewards. Oh, sweetheart, how are you? Into your dressing room. Into your dressing room. That's a good dog. And Stuart is the stage manager. Chokidar has a dressing room here in stage management where we work. Um, she has a, a nice blanket to lie down on and her water, and she does get the occasional biscuit from time to time. Uh, people treat her with a biscuit. She has a place to uh, display her press clippings and her cards and presents from opening night and just to hang out like all the other actors. Rod stays behind the scenes while Chokidar rehearses. In The Seagull, she plays the role of the dog belonging to Yakov, the workman, played by Andy Poxen. I think she loves the stage. She loves being up there, and, and you can just see her relax, and, and she's very easygoing, and she loves performing, and, and I hope she loves performing with me. <laughs> There's been many times that I've talked to people about the seagull and the response they get was they don't quite recognize me until I say, well, I was the one with the dog. And then, oh, of course, you're the right, the dog, the dog. Being upstaged by Chokidar doesn't bother me at all. She's, she just commands that kind of attention. In their dressing rooms, the actors get ready. But there are no butterflies for Chokidar. She knows her cues, where to walk, where to stand, and when to wag her tail. One of the problems of working with animals is that it's very hard to say to them, it's only a play. But Chokidar seems to be able to distinguish between a play and reality. All too soon, Chokidar's time in the limelight is over. The dog was good, and he responded well to his, uh, to his master, and was unperturbed by everyone else that was there. I think he was one of, he's one of my favorite parts. Chokidar, Canada's premier dog thespian.